Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Azaleas webinar. Today we're talking about SharePoint 2010, the newly launched and uh, greatly enhanced version of SharePoint from Microsoft. And we have, as usual, a 30-minute webinar, so you can get into some great data nuggets about SharePoint and get back to your work day as soon as possible. Uh, today, as always with the, the Azaleas webinars, we will um, be working through a about a 200 level type of content, trying to make it as, as technically meaty as we can in, in the space of 30 minutes. And also, as always, uh, we're using the um, live meeting technology here. So if you have questions, please feel free to throw them into the Q&A box there. We'll uh, perhaps get to them during the course of the webinar, um, but certainly get to them at the end. And if we run out of time at the end, we'll contact you individually to follow up. Uh, my name is Scott Godey, and I'm going to be playing both uh, Master of Ceremonies today as well as giving you a brief introduction and overview of the Azaleas solution. Introducing Jason Derringer, who is our Director of SharePoint Services from Azaleas, who will be focusing on the final, following five uh, topic areas, what we're calling Start Me Up, a little bit of the Wizard of Oz, talking about extranets, globalization, and migrations, all as it uh, applies to SharePoint 2010. For those of you that uh, can bear with us for the full 30 minutes of this webinar, I encourage you to stick around. We're going to be giving away a free SharePoint assessment at the end of the webinar. Uh, for those of you that, uh, for whatever reason, can't stick around for the entire webinar, we do record all of these webinars. So if you tune in late, if you have to leave early, or if you have a, a colleague or an associate who absolutely you believe must see this webinar, then uh, tune back into our Azalea's website in about 24 hours after the webinar is over, and we'll have it posted up there for on-demand download. All right, let's jump into Azaleos a bit. Quickly on Azaleos, we've been around for five-plus years. We started off focusing on Exchange, but we've since uh, enhanced and extended our solution into focus on SharePoint, Office Communication Server, Active Directory, and even a little BlackBerry Enterprise server on the side. We monitor and manage customer environments from our network operations centers, in both Seattle and Charlotte, and uh, we've won a number of awards for this work where we really provide either an on-premise or a private cloud uh, installation deployment of your, in this case, SharePoint systems. We really take care of all the back-end needs, making sure that system is up and running 24 by 7 by 3 as 165 days a year with a real sort of proactive service. So quite often we know about and, and discover problems before you and even more importantly before your end users know what's happened. We serve a wide variety of customers all over the U.S., all over the world for that matter, really uh, going up to uh, the largest of the Fortune 500 and even in some cases Fortune 100 companies. And um, our customer retention, something we're quite proud of, has, has been uh, extraordinarily high. The solution is really, you can think about it as comprised of three parts. The, the bedrock and the, the part of it is our managed services for Exchange, for SharePoint, for Office Communication Server. We have a, a, a wide range of certified, Microsoft certified experts uh, in the uh, SharePoint, in the Exchange, in the Office Communication Center space. And as I mentioned before, it's all about proactive monitoring, finding those issues, keeping your, your systems up and running. In order to support that, we uh, work with a, a wide range of hardware providers, both on the server as well as the storage side, and certainly can work with what you have, but also resell such things as NetApp, EMC, IBM, Dell, et cetera, to help you get uh, with the latest and greatest hardware, and certainly with the case of SharePoint 2010, it requires 64-bit uh, hardware, so in some cases, customers will need to upgrade in order to run this new release. We then back it all up with uh, a more minor part of our business, professional services, whether it's an assessment or a health check to see how your current environment is working or, or what you might want to or need to do to in install a new environment, Architecture planning to give you the best advice for how you'd uh, set up your, your new system, your new SharePoint 2010 system, and then certainly deployment and migration planning from competitive as well as down-level Microsoft products. Our technology, just to give you a quick look of both you, if you should choose to, as well as our network operations center technicians uh, work with, uh, it gives us a, a real-time view of your server health by location, allows us to get a summary of all the systems monitored, 
give us, gives us a status of all the alerts that come through relating to that specific system, allows, allows us to look at the tickets and how quickly we resolve. It looks at uh, the storage capacity of the systems, uh, an alert summary of all the different alerts across all the different customers. This is a class uh, patented technology we use and, and provide to you, and you really reap the benefits of as a potential customer of Azaleos. We have a, a wide variety of customers and a wide variety of vertical and, uh, in some cases, horizontal industries. And uh, enough of the commercial right to SharePoint. I'd like to introduce Jason Derringer, who's uh, our director of SharePoint Services, has been working on SharePoint since uh, the dawn of time, uh, since the early days of SharePoint, and has uh, got a lot of great insights to share with you. He's been uh, sort of one of the earliest early adopters of SharePoint 2010, so he's, he's dissected this thing and built it back up, and I'll turn it over to him now. Jason, oh, one, sorry, with that uh, great preamble, one other thing I just want to warn you all of, we're going to be doing a few polls throughout the rest of the seminar, so I'm going to be coming back and interjecting um, and providing you an opportunity to vote on a few questions that are very relevant and germane to SharePoint. So um, I'll be back in a minute. Jason, over to you. Hello, everyone, and I hope you're having a good day. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, SharePoint 2010. Uh, some of the topics that I've got is the, is the wizards, both good and evil, um, the, the websites, portals, and blogs, services that are going to be uh, available to you to uh, get content out to your users as quickly as possible and, most of, and as efficiently as possible. Uh, extranets, how to take advantage of that, uh, some of the services that are around that. Globalization, Federated Farms, a brand new service within SharePoint 2010 and how you can utilize it for uh, large-scale global deployments. And lastly, uh, migrations, how if anyone's gone through the 2003 to 2007 mi migration, you'll, you'll appreciate what they've done in uh, 2010. So starting off with the wizards, there's, they, in 2007, they gave you two wizards. And now in uh, 2010, they give you three. And they both, all three of them seem to have their uh, unique caveats. Uh, the setup wizard... The, that's the first thing you do when you're installing the software. It's great. Um, the one of the biggest features that they've added to that is a prerequisite installer. So no figuring, no more figuring out what services or what um, uh, what features or roles need to be installed. It's all done for you, including grabbing things off the net. Uh, so you're making make sure that you're always getting the latest packages. Uh, the downside to it is. They still put in that uh, the, the two opportunities to do the standalone install. They they ask you uh, right at the beginning, do you want to do a standalone or uh, a customized? And then as soon as you hit customized, it brings you right to the next screen where the first thing is checked and it says recommended is to do the standalone install. Don't know why they did it, they uh, why they're doing it that way, but uh, it seems to catch a lot of people. And Jason, that, that standalone install, uh, just to remind people that may not have that familiar with 2007, that's bad or not good for... Yeah, the standalone install uh, doesn't allow you to uh, uh, actually connect to a SQL backend. It utilizes its SQL Express engine, the, the, the free version of SQL, uh, which limits you to only 4 gigs of overall storage, as well as puts it all into one box and, and uh, assumes that you, you want uh, Microsoft to default everything across the board. Uh, when it comes to uh, setting things up. So that that has a tendency to catch a lot of people when they're initially deploying SharePoint 2010. So once, you, once you've actually got over those caveats, you've got to move into the, the products and technology configuration wizard. That wizard allows you to actually build, up, build the farm, create, a, 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 connect all the servers in, um, and... Uh, one of the things that they've done is they've introduced what is called managed accounts, which allow um, the SharePoint environment to change the password on a password schedule for security. So what they've done is they've actually uh, created what is called a farm password. So this is one password that isn't associated to any service account that is maintained within the farm itself that allows you to add, uh, add and remove servers as needed. Uh, this way, you never have to know what the service accounts are. Uh, it works well within our uh, in our breadth of services for SharePoint 2010 in the fact that we don't have to know the, the actual passwords to get things to, to expand or scale out or scale up the farm. 
Lastly is the services wizard. Now, there's this is what happens after you've got all your servers connected all uh, and, and it's ready to go and you're ready to actually start getting some services and content out there for the users. Microsoft's pushing really hard for this wizard, but it does have some fair, fairly unique caveats. First off, Microsoft wants you to use the wizard, but they also want you to run in least privileges. If you use the wizard, the wizard doesn't allow you to assign service accounts to individual services, so like the Excel, Visio, Performance Point, Search, uh, Manage Metadata. We'll get more into those services a little bit later. Um, but on the on the flip side, you can't start certain services through the GUI without you know, without actually running the wizard. So it's kind of a six of one, half a dozen of the other in, in that particular uh, respect. Uh, specifically the state service, which is required by the InfoPath form services. The other downside to it is, is once you've run it once, or you can't run it again. It will, uh, it will only allow you to run that, that, uh, that wizard with a service count once. So moving on to uh, websites, portals, and blogs. Now, they've increased the amount of services that are available in SharePoint 2010 by uh, a factor of three.